Hello and welcome to another exam paper walkthrough. Uh, today we're looking at uh, another paper from the NXL aiming for a grade range. Uh, today we're looking at the aiming for grade four paper two. So this is the calculator paper. <coughs> um, I will get straight in. Uh, we're looking at 30 questions on this paper. Uh, so I'll do this as three chunks of 10 uh, questions. Uh, sorry, three chunks of three videos of 10 questions. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, today I'll be using my old emulator um, from the uh, FX82 range. I haven't got the, a more up-to-date emulator really that works particularly well um, other than a web version. Um, so we'll start off. Uh, so question one, write these, uh, write the following numbers in order of size, starting with the smallest. So uh, we're doing that ordering uh, negative to positive integers. Uh, so our smallest number here is minus 11. Uh, we're then looking at minus 7. Uh, it's a good idea to cross these out, check that we've covered them all. Then we've got minus 2. They're into the positive numbers. We've got 3, followed by 8, followed by 10. So 3, 8, and then 10. I'll put commas in between just to make it clear. And that would be all I would expect to do for that question. <clears throat> Question two, write the, the following numbers in size order, starting with the smallest. Um, so again, uh, similar question, really. Um, so we start with minus 7, minus 2, minus 1, 0, and then 7. I think that's covered them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There we go. Okay, um, question three, write down a three-digit number that is a multiple of 5. Uh, so that's, I'm going to go and write down the first one that I can come up with which would be 100 um, although it will be uh, any three digit number ending with a zero or a five okay uh, question four write 37 percent as a fraction well, that's going to be 37 out of 100 all percentages are out of 100 and then I could simplify that down um, if I could spot a number that goes into both 37 and 100 I can't take, I can't spot one uh, let's use my calculator just to simplify it if we can. No, there isn't one. So 37 out of 100. <clears throat> and that's it for the page. So I'll go to straight to the mark scheme. So question one. Uh, let me just bring up my mark scheme. So for question one, we are looking at B1 mark. For question two, correct, uh, well, correct answer only for that. Uh, question two, same again, B1 mark, correct answer only. And question three. Uh, what it says is, for example, 125 or 250, B1. This mark is given for a correct three-digit number and set ending in a zero or a five. So, yeah, no issue with that. And then for question four, yeah, again, B1 mark, correct answer only. <clears throat> okay, question five. Uh, write 0 0.4 as a percentage. Uh, so that was a fraction as a percentage. Uh, percentage as a fraction. Percentage as a <coughs> fraction, now we're doing a decimal as a percentage. Um, so f 0 0.4, uh, we could in theory times by 100. Uh, there's a number of ways you could view it. Uh, I would tend to view it as 4 out of 10, uh, which is equal to 40 out of 100. So 40%. Um, question 6, uh, Safiya. Sophia wants to hire a van. She uses this rule to calculate the cost of hiring a van for a number of days. Cost is equal to £45 times by the number of days. Uh, Sophia is going to hire the van for seven days. Work out the cost. Uh, so the cost is going to be equal to 45 times by seven. So 45 times by seven would give us 315. So 315. Okay, and that is it for the page. So um, for question five, the marks is a B1, correct answer only. So B1. And then for question two, we're looking for one method mark for showing 45 multiplied by seven. So M1 and then A1 for 315. Okay. Question seven, uh, the table shows information about the number of students who arrive late at school each day, one week. So we've got number of students and we've got the days Monday to Friday. On the grid, draw a bar chart to show this information. Um, so uh, technically speaking, we need a gap between our bars. Uh, do we need a gap between our bars? Let me just 
I would put a gap between the bars because Monday to Friday are categories, technically speaking, although they do follow in chronological order. Um, but I'm going to do them as distinct bars. So I need to have um, at least uh, five. So if I start planning Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that fits quite nicely. So I'm going to go M O N T U E Wed Thursday and Friday. <clears throat> I'm going to label that then days of the week. Technically speaking, I should really, let's just label it to match. Well, there's no category there, but yeah, I would go for days of the week. And then we need to go up to 10. So how many squares have we got? We've got two, four, six, eight, 10. We've got 12 squares in total. So I'm gonna go up in twos. Um, I'm gonna go up in one, sorry, two, four, six, eight, 10. Um, and that is number of students. Right, so my first category was Monday, which needed to go up to nine, I believe. Yeah, nine. Um, so, just look and see if I've got a ruler handy. I can't quite spot one, so I'll go freehand. Right, so my Monday bar goes up to nine. My Tuesday bar goes up to 10. My Wednesday bar goes up to eight my thursday bar goes up to six and my friday bar goes up to three uh, let's just double check those totals uh ten eight six three ten eight six three perfect Okay, and that's it for that page. So let's have a look at mark schemes. So we're saying M1, this mark is given for the days label or a linear scale. Uh, so we pick up M1 here. Um, oh no, I've done that on the wrong side. So it was m1 um it's given for days labeled so or for linear scales actually where i put it last time was absolutely fine m1 is given for the correct bars showing information for at least three days so by the third one i will i'll just move that to the wrong place let's see if i can move that back without messing my diagram up too much so i'll stretch that now so if I just go home and then go back, I should move it back to the right place. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to award it on the third one. And then my final one, A1, this mark is given for a fully correct bar chart. So there's my three marks. <clears throat> okay, um, and question eight. Um, Son Sonia wants to book a holiday. The holiday will cost £1,428. Uh, Sonia will pay a deposit of £150. She will then pay the rest of the cost in six equal monthly payment. Uh, how much is each monthly payment? So uh, for that, we need to do 1,428 minus 150. And then we want to divide the answer by six to get our monthly payments. Um, and I would type that into my calculator like that. So 1,428 minus 150. And I want that divided by six. So that will give me £213. So each monthly payment would be £213. OK, and that's it for that page. So um, where do we go? So the mark scheme says it is a P1 mark for, um, for showing uh, 1,428 minus uh, 150 so p1 can be awarded there we've then got an a1 for dividing it by it's saying an a1 for showing divided by six i'd slightly argue that's not an answer that's a method but no major drama there there's my three marks okay uh question nine uh sophie works in a bed shop during the last three months she sold 198 beds 
59 of the beds were sold without a mattress, 45 beds were double beds, 17 of the single beds were sold without a mattress, 67 of the 83 king size beds were sold with a mattress. Um, use this information to complete the two way table. So let's start off. Uh, she sold a total of 198 beds, so I can put 198 as my total there. 59 beds were sold without mattresses, so without mattresses I've got a total of 59 which can go there. 45 of the beds were double, so 45 can go there. 17 of the single beds were sold without a mattress, so 17 of the single beds, single beds 17 were sold without a mattress. And then we've got 67 of the king size beds were sold without a mattress. So uh, we can go 83 there. And we can also go sold with a mattress. So 67 there. Let's just check the wording. 67 of the 83 king size beds were sold with a mattress. Yep. Yeah. There we go. So that's um, putting the information from the question into a two way table. I'm then going to start to fill in. The missing values. Uh, so the one I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to use my calculator to, to back all these answers up. So 198 minus 59, 198 minus 59 gives me 139 for my total bed sold with a mattress. Uh, I'm then going to do this one by doing 83 minus 67. So I've got 16 king beds, king size beds sold without a mattress. Uh, I'm going to go to this value here. Um, to do that, I'm going to do 198 minus 83 minus 45. That gives me 70. Um, I'm then going to do this one. So 70 minus 17 will give me 53. Um, I'm then going to do this one here. So uh, 59 <clears throat> minus 16 minus 17. And then I'm going to do my final value and I'm going to do it two ways. Uh, I'm going to do it one way and then one way to check. So I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do it using this row. So I'm going to do 139 minus 67 minus 53. And that gives me 19. And then just as my check, 45 minus 26 also equals 19 so i know i've got that right okay and that's it for that page so question nine <clears throat> so to c1 for all of my red values so c1 for all of those red values it's then another c1 for at least one unknown piece of data from this one, this one, and this one. So I'm going to, so from this one, this one, and this one. So I'll go for the first one that appears. And then C1 for, for final, fully complete. Actually, those are all C marks. Um, so three marks in total. Okay, and question 10. So here it is, a number machine. So input divided by seven and then plus five. Work out the output when the input is 27, uh, 28. So if you put 28 in there, 28 divided by seven would be four and then four plus four, five would be nine. So nine should be my output. If we can double check, 28 divided by seven plus five, nine. There we go. Um, here is a different number machine. The number machine is not complete. Uh, when the input is 54, the output is 154. Sorry, when the input is 8, the output is 154. So if we've got 154 here, uh, we need to work out, uh, we know that 8 comes in. What we don't currently know is this middle stage. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, for a number of 156, to come out after it's been multiplied by 7. If I do 154 divided by 7, uh, divided by 11, sorry, we would have 14 at this midpoint here. So what do I, at this midpoint here. So what do I need to do to 8 to get to 14? That would be plus 6. So 6 is going to be my center part, uh, sorry, my first 
function. Okay, um, write 1,476 to the nearest 10. So that's the 10 figure at the moment. We need to decide if it remains as a 7 or rounds up to an 8. And because the number in the units column is a 6, we would round it up to an 8. So that becomes uh, 1,480. Okay, and we've gone slightly further than that. 10 questions. So I'll mark those and then I will stop the video briefly. So for question 10, we had... <clears throat> uh, B149, so no drama there. Uh, for part B, it is P1 for the process of completing the function machine, which is suggesting 154 divided by 11 is 14. So I'm going to go P1 there and then M1 for the 6. Uh, sorry, A1 for the 6. Okay. And then uh, question 11 is just a B1 mark for 1,480. There we go.